for those deals uh, this evening, well, I have to be honest with you, it's not been just this evening. I'd like to have just been a musician all week. <laughs> uh, but hey, you know what? It wasn't meant to be this week. If you would, stand with me, please. The first book of Samuel, chapter 1. First book of Samuel, chapter 1. And while you're finding that, first book of Samuel, chapter 1, um, <clears throat> for those of you who maybe the first time you've heard me, I generally will stand down here. And there's a reason for that. I don't always, there's nothing wrong, I've said a hundred times, nothing wrong with being up here. Um, I know there's a lot of different times, and I have, I have spoke from behind the, the pulpit many, many, many times. Um, but in, in different settings, I like to, to get down in the boat with everybody. Yeah. Because I, I, I always say that I'm not just preaching to you, I'm, I'm preaching or speaking to us because I'm in the same boat. Amen. Amen. And so that's, if, if you kind of were curious about that, that, that maybe will answer your question a little bit about that. But first Samuel, first book of Samuel, uh, starting with chapter 1. <clears throat> I should have brought my reading glasses, but I did not. My wife just purchased me a new pair and I left them at home. But that's all right. Here we go. <clears throat> Elkanah, the son of Jehoiabim, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, and Ephaphorite. Easy for me to say. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Peniah. And Peniah had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of the city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priest of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Peniah his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb, and her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret, because the Lord has shut up her womb. I want to pause right there and ask the Lord to help us this evening. Our dear, kind, and heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercies that you have shown to me thus far. We thank you for your grace that you have allowed us to be a partaker of. And Lord, we ask that this evening, that one more time, that the Holy Spirit would, would be pleased to anoint our heart, our mind, our lips. Give us clarity of thought. Settle our hearts and our minds, Father, that, that we may be able to speak those things which would please you, that we may lift up the church, that we may edify the church, that you may have the instruction and the love that you would want for us to have tonight. So, Lord, we humbly give you these things, and we humbly thank you for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. the midst of revival, the purpose of gathering in these services is to, to stir our hearts toward the things of God, to, to have revival within ourselves, that we may have revival within the church, that we may have revival within the community. And one of the things that, that comes with revival and in, in anticipating revival and praying for revival is that there is a time that we are going to have to reach a certain point in our life of saying to ourselves, we are tired of the mundane. Amen. We are tired of the status quo. Now, things never change until people are tired of the status quo. Amen. Amen. I'm glad Orville Wright and his brother was tired of the status quo. I'm glad, glad that Henry Ford was tired of the status quo. And those are, those are inventions and things in our society that has been pleasing to us. It has advanced the cause of, of our society. Um, it, it has helped us 
in being able to fly different places. It has helped us in being able to drive different places. And so I'm glad that there was those in our history, and you could go on and name a, a bunch, a bunch of different things, about where people were tired of the status quo. Now, one of the things that I really believe with all my heart, and I'm going to speak to myself tonight, if you don't mind, and you can listen. You can, you can listen in, but I'm going to preach to myself. Is that okay? Here's, here's one of the things that I need to do. I need to be tired of the status quo. Now, maybe you don't, but I do. I want to be tired of the status quo in the spiritual realm. I want to be tired of the status quo with my life spiritually. I want to be tired of the status quo to the point that it causes me to take action. Now, I have a lot of things going on in my life right now. I know all of us, all of us can say that. I'm sure of that. But there's a lot of things going on in my life right now, and as a result of that, the, 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 the physical regime that I used to partake of has really slacked off. Now, I want to so bad to get back into the physical workouts, the physical things that I used to do so that I would feel better. I really want to do that, but I haven't. It hasn't bothered me enough to want to do it. I give priority to other things. Now, I know what I should do, and there's, there's even things that my nutritionist has advised that, that I don't partake of because it really helps me if I don't partake of these things. But you know what? Because I've got other things on my heart and my mind, I let it go. The things that, that are truly important, I've, I've kind of... I've let them go and now I'm suffering for them. I know what I should do, but I'm like, well, I, I will get to it. As soon as I get these other things taken care of, I will get back on track. Monday morning always comes around, doesn't it? <laughs> Monday morning. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, you, you understand what I'm saying. But I want to get out of the status quo when it comes to my spiritual life. And so... When we look at this account in Samuel, we, we see that Hannah, she got tired of the status quo. First of all, one of the things that she did to make this change, to get out of the mundane. Now, I don't know how long that this had been going on, but, you know, she could have been content in saying, well, you know, his other wife... She has children and I can adopt them and that'll all be well and good and, and I'll be content with that and I'll be happy with that and, and I'll adopt them as my own, you know, and, and that kind of thing. And, and when they went to the sanctuary there at the, uh, uh, to, to go to, to Shiloh to worship, you know, they, people could have come up to them and, 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 and to her and, sh and ask her how she was doing and, and she, she could have said what we all say, we're blessed, we're doing great, God's good and things are absolutely wonderful but on the inside we're dying and wishing we could tell somebody what our real problem was. Amen. Come on. Come on. Hey, Amen. Maybe you ought to say that again, Paul. <laughs> she probably went to the sanctuary there in Shiloh and she come in, in board, on board of the sanctuary and, and she probably shook hands with the other ladies. And, oh, how are you doing, Hannah? It's, it's oh, I'm, I am blessed. I'm having such a wonderful time. God is so good. Things are wonderful right now. And I'm just excited beyond measure. But on the inside, she was just tore up. It's time the church stops lying to one another. Amen. Let's be real. Now, we don't have to be drudgery. We don't have to live in drudgery. But we need to be real. Now, I know I digressed here for a moment, but I knew I was going to digress here for a moment on that point. It's time the church is just simply real. How are you doing? Well, of course I'm blessed, but you know what? I ain't exactly okay. We're supposed to bear one... Uh, ooh, I'm really digressing now. That wasn't intense. But you know what? One of the things that we're supposed to do is bear one another's brother, right. burdens. Right. And how can we bear one another's burdens if everything's okay? Come 
Well, he or she wasn't sure interested in me. Don't they understand what's going on? Well, you just told me you were blessed and everything was fine. Yeah. How am I supposed to help you with your burden if everything is good? Yeah. Come on, Paul. Well, Hannah here, she, she, she had an aching heart. She had gotten past that. You know, she probably might have said, well, you know what, I'm blessed, but my heart hurts because I don't have any children of my own. Now, here's where I'm going with this. I think that myself, I want to get past the mundane and past the status quo to where I hurt spiritually speaking to where I can say, hey, I don't have any children of my own spiritually. Is the church bearing the children? Is the church wanting to bear children spiritually speaking? Amen. That's where we're going with this. Now, Hannah, what does she do? She goes there. She makes herself, first of all, available. She's at, at, at hand. That's what that means. There's a lot of people who say, hey, I'll be available Saturday morning. You just let me know if you need any help. And for some reason, their texts never go through. I was out of cell service. I must have been in a dead zone. You in a dead zone, all right. But maybe, if you see what I'm saying? Well, sometimes we can be available. We can be at hand. But that word goes on a little deeper in its definition. It's not only to be at hand, but it also means to be usable. Come on, brother. To be usable. If we're going to be available, we also, hey, I'll be, I'll be available to do whatever you need, but that also means that, you can, that I'll be usable. Whatever you need, I'm willing to jump in there and do and help. Now, she was available. And Hannah cries out to God in verse 10. And she arose in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Now here's the thing. She got tired of the way she was being treated. You know, the devil is an accuser of the brethren. He likes to treat the saints horrible, doesn't he? Well, at what point is the church not going to finally say, I'm sick and tired of what's going on? At what point is the church not going to say, I'm sick and tired of not seeing souls born into the kingdom of God? At what point is the church going to say, I'm sick and tired of not having a burden for the lost and not wanting to see souls being born and born in the kingdom of God to where we say, hey, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm going to do something about it. Amen. Well, Hannah had gotten to that point and she prayed unto the Lord and she wept sore. She got tired of the way she was being treated. She was bitterly angry. She was full. Can I say something here? As a believer, if you haven't gotten angry and you tell me that you've never been hurt, frustrated, angry, let me tell you something. I suspect that you might be just a little bit mischievous and not quite telling the truth. Amen. <laughs> There's been times I've had to go to God and say, Lord, I am so sorry that I have been angry at you. You say, oh, you've been angry at God? Yes, I have. Come on, Paul. Sure. Am I allowed to be just where the rubber meets the road? I'm just a musician and doesn't know any better. Come on. Just turn the amp up and pick. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? We need to come clean and honest. There's been times that I have been angry with God and I've had to go back and say, God in heaven, forgive me for being angry with you. Forgive me for my bitterness. Forgive me for, for all the frustration that I feel, the confusion and the misunderstandings of why this and why that has never worked out and why so on and so forth. Why I can't seem to, ask, as it were, to bear the spiritual children. How come, how come I'm so barren? Now maybe that doesn't concern you. Maybe it hasn't ever crossed your mind. Maybe you never thought about it. But maybe it's time we start. Amen. I, I, I want to remind us, and I want to be real careful because I'm real careful about some of these things that I do say. And it depends on the situation. Sometimes I'm not real careful. But now, here's the thing. We live in a society that is currently very fragile. And the church better have her ear to the ground paying attention. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Amen. That's right. You know, one of the ways that the church has revival is when there's a catastrophe. 
I want to have revival before there's a catastrophe. I want to humble myself before God before I am forced to humble myself before God. So many times that a community will turn its back on God or a nation will turn its back on God but if that community has a, has a flood ravaged through or if that community has a hurricane ravaged through or a tor- tornado ravaged through or some kind of shooting ravaged through then that community begins to, to cry out to others hey please pray for us we need help down here we need help up here out here we need help because of this and this and this and this I want to be able to cry out to God before those things happen But Hannah, she was fed up. She was tired. She wept bitterly. Her heart was heavy. She was discontented with the status quo. If we're going to see the status quo change, we're going to have to become discontent. Now you say, well, that contradicts what the Bible says. The Bible says be content in such things, therefore, as you have, etc., and so on. But I'm talking about being discontent with the status quo in the spiritual realm of not bearing children. And the only way that that is going to come about if we, like Hannah, make ourselves available and we, like Hannah, we get before God and we confess and we pray to God and we weep before Him. Hey, Paul, that's my name. When was the last time you get tired of not bearing any fruit to see lost souls come to church and be born again? Amen. I'm just asking a question. You know, Hannah wants a child so bad that she doesn't even eat. Now, there's different forms of fasting. We can proclaim a fast nationally. It's happened in the Word. It's happened, I'm sure it's happened in our great country. Um, The pastor will sometimes proclaim a fast. And then there's nothing wrong with that. Those are good things. But now this instance that I'm about to say is my opinion. I believe that a fast is when that there is something so heavy on my heart that I lose my appetite. Let me say that one more time because that struck a nerve. It's kind of like acupuncture. Let's put one more needle in there. A true genuine fast, in my opinion, is when we are so burdened with something that it causes us to lose our appetite because we want so bad to see God move. Amen. 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 When was the last time, Paul, that you lost your appetite because you was concerned for the lost? There's another acupuncture needle that needs to go in there. Paul, when was the last time that you are so concerned. We're talking about revival for the church. Understand what I'm getting at here? Okay, we're back on that same foundation. But what I'm saying is, when was the last time, Paul, that, that you were so concerned for the loss, that you had a burden for the loss, that you lost your physical appetite? Hannah wants a child so bad, she lost her physical appetite. Now, verse, verse 11 And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. She lets God know she is available, but she's willing to be an instrument used in seeing, in seeing, excuse me, but she's willing to give an she's willing to 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 give Samuel to give that child she even names him Samuel but give him back to God, and she says this. But will give unto thy handmaid a man child? Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Are we willing to be the instrument used in seeing new souls born into the kingdom of God? Are we willing to do that? Being a parent is not for cowards. 
Now I'm going somewhere with this. My wife and I, not me, my wife and I have raised four boys. Being a parent is not for the, the cowardly. But neither is praying in and praying for a burden spiritual births that take place within the church. Because you see, once the babies are born within the church, there comes responsibility. Amen. Yeah. But now she pays the price. She's availing herself and her future to God. It scared me to death to have a child. I'm somebody who said I would never get married or have kids. <coughs> now this is not a boast. I promise you it's not because I know there's a lot of hurts in the church and, and, and I, I promise you wholeheartedly but I have been blessed to have been married to my wife for 34 years. Amen. And I have been blessed to have four wonderful young men. Amen. But I'm somebody who said that I didn't want any children. I didn't want to get married. I didn't want any children because I knew they'd step all over my heart. I didn't want any children because I was scared to death of what could possibly happen. I was scared to death because what if, what if they grow up and they, they go crazy? How that would hurt. But the thing is, we need to not worry about the future when it comes to bearing spiritual children, but the church needs to take care of them and trust God for their future. Now, service for the Levites, which was where Samuel was going to be headed, was normally from the age of 25 through 50. But she dedicates him for his entire life. He doesn't even have a say so. <laughs> Mama already laid down the groundwork and the ground rules before he was even conceived. But you know what? There will be sacrifice when travailing for souls. She was willing to give him up her entire life, yeah. travailing for him right. that she would have a son. Now, there comes responsibility. What does that mean? That means the ability to meet obligations. If there's got to be spiritual children born, there's got to be responsible parents spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And we can't shirk the duty. What does that mean exactly? Well, the Lord was faithful in meeting her need. It's God who gives the increase, but it is us who must pray. And Samuel would not be going to the temple presented for service until he was weaned. When new souls are born into the kingdom of God, it is the responsibility of the seasoned saints to be mature enough themselves to help wean those babes for service. And, I, and I, I don't know, maybe it's my figment of my imagination, but I kind of remember somewhere along the line that maybe you read this too, I don't know, um, but somewhere along the line where, where the mothers are supposed to help the, the younger daughters Amen. in the church. I don't know, is there something like that in there? Absolutely. Some, 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 something like that, and I, I kind of recall something like that, where, where the older ladies are supposed to help bring up the younger ones. And, 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 you know, probably, probably something along the line where us older guys are supposed to help kind of undertake and put the younger ones under our wing. We wonder why people are here no more. Come on, Amen. Come on, brother. Preach it, brother. Come on, brother. Have we failed as spiritual parents? It's just, Paul, have you failed as a spiritual parent? Help us. But the thing is, What's in the past is the past. Let's go with now. Amen. Let's not lament the failures of the past. Let's learn from the failures of the past. And let's start now. Let's pray for new births. And when they come along, let's take our responsibility like we should and raise them up within the church, nursing them, catering to them, and helping them. And you know what? They might just hang out. Amen. Yeah. 
It's messy dealing with youngins. It's messy changing a diaper. And I'm so glad I worked outside the home. <laughs> God was good. <laughs> There's some things I have a real sensitive stomach to, and that's one of them. <laughs> but you know what? On the flip side of that, in the spiritual sense, we're going to come across people who, who, who we may say that when they get saved, they don't know all the ins and outs of things. And it's going to get a little squeamish maybe at times. Come on, Paul. But we're going to have to suck it up as parents, spiritual parents, and make it happen. Come on, Paul. We're going to have to say, you know what? I, I, Lord, give me grace because I'm going to have to go and pick him up again. I wish I wish we could get him a job so he could get a car. Whew, boy, this is such this oh, this is aggravating. Now yeah, it may be aggravating, but you love him, so you go do it anyway. But you don't let him know you're aggravated either. But you steer him. You let him know, you know what, I got a lot of faith in you. I really think that you could get a good job. Let me see if I can help find you something. But one of the first things we want to do is say, man, why don't you go get a job? <laughs> what, you ain't been out looking for one? Well, the poor kid ain't even got his license. How's he going to get there? Amen. Oh, boy, that's really Madeline. I better get back. Preach it. Preach it. But you know what? We also have to listen. Well, let's put it this way. We have to say the same things over and over again. And you know what? I get that because God has to say the same things to me over and over again. So, you know, when I talk about things like this, I get it because I'm, I'm a kid that's always trying to mature and God is always shaking his head at me. So I understand that when, when so-and-so is just kind of like, what's the matter with you? Why don't you, why don't you get it? And I can't be hard on them because I know that I'm giving God fits the same way. I heard that. Come on. I know you follow me. Yeah. I can tell. And you know what? The thing is, <clears throat> we have got to do that though. We've got to be that parent that will, that will help those ones that have come into the fold, into the kingdom. They can't walk in the dark sometimes. You've got to listen to the one. You've got to listen to the complaining. You've got to comfort their fears of their own shadows. And sometimes, at night, you might have to put up with their fears, their frustrations. I remember when my boys were young. Daddy, I'm scared. Ah, don't worry about it. Go talk to your mom. Go back to bed. <laughs> no. I didn't do that. Not on your life. I loved my boys. And I still do. We're extremely close. But I let my boys know that they didn't have anything to be afraid of. Come on. We might have to put up with some phone calls in the middle of the night because of their uncertainties. But we shouldn't mind because we're spiritual parents. Maybe they lapsed and went back and got drunk. Because they fell prey to temptation and they're discouraged and they want to throw up their hands and totally quit. What do we do? Do we say, well, what's the matter with you? You didn't get saved anyway. You just go ahead and run your own life. No, we put our arms around them and we let them know that God's grace is sufficient. God's grace can help them. God's grace can give them courage and strength to be an overcomer because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And we can love them through the situations. I've always told my boys, I said, fellas, you're going to fail. You're just going to. Because I know your mom's not an alien and I'm not an alien and you're not perfect. You're human. You're going to fail. But I said, here's the thing. When you fall prey to temptation, when you fall prey to these things, I said, let me know. And I said, understand this. I was armor than probably what you ever dreamed that you could be, so I already got a handle on what you're probably going to do. 
So I said, will you do it? And I confront you about it. Don't lie to me. I'm not going to beat you over the head with it. Yeah. And you know what else? One of the things I did with my boys, I never, once I had made the corrections, I never kept reminding them how foolish and what a failure they were. Amen. I dropped it. Amen. Amen. Come on, buddy. Yeah. Preach. Sometimes I wonder if we haven't maybe killed some spiritual babies because we have just hit them over the head with their failures. When we should have made the correction and then loved them and said, I'm done. I don't know how many times there would be times my boys, we would, they would get to fussing and carrying on from time to time. And I'd make the corrections and I'd say, okay, the corrections are done. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my day. I'm going to have fun. Are you with me? And after a little bit, they get that sheepish grin on their face because they knew Dad was serious that we was going to enjoy the rest of the day. It was over. Sometimes being a mature as a believer is being able to help raise newborns for Jesus Christ, but so many of us are like the world. The world says we don't want children because of the inconvenience. We in the church world don't want to be able to see new souls brought in because we don't want to take the responsibility to pray them in, first of all. And second of all, we don't take the time and responsibility it takes to raise new babes in Christ. When it comes to revival, either we give spiritual birth and see new souls saved or we die. If the human race ceases to continue to give birth, it dies. If there's a certain tribe, if you will, for lack of better explanation, in the Congo, if for some reason they stop giving birth, that tribe will die out. Amen. That peoples will die out. Amen. Now I know God's children will never die out. But my, my thing, my question is, and I know people will say, and I've had this conversation with myself, people will say, why do you refer sometimes back to the old days when they seem, you keep saying the old days sometimes there are better well, let, let me ask you a question. Now, this is, this is touchy, but I don't mean it to be touchy. I mean, I mean it to just help us to see, open our eyes a little bit. But is there more in church today now than there was a few years back? Are we seeing more souls saved today, or have we seen more souls saved back some time ago? All over. Come on. Is America? Is America? You see, I, now I'm digressing for a moment. I'm gonna draw a little circle here. I'm gonna step right here in the circle because I'm gonna digress for a second. Oh, I have a deadpan sense of humor, so oh, just yeah. ignore me. <laughs> the thing is, is America better off today than she was several years back when the church was thriving? We have to be realists. Amen. Come on. Amen. I, don't, I don't want to be gloomy, but we have to be realists. Amen. In order for the doctor to diagnose the problem and to, when he diagnoses the problem, in order for him to, to find the cure or give us the cure, he has to diagnose the problem and tell us what it is. Come on. And it's not always happy news. Amen. No, it's not. And, and that, but he's being a realist to us. The doctor is being real. But then he provides the cure. So the thing is, we have to acknowledge the real truth of what is going on, but then we have to say, okay, well, what's the cure? Well, in the spiritual realm, we know what the cure is. The cure is, is that we need to get tired of the status quo. We need to be like Hannah and say, I'm fed up. I'm sick and tired. I'm tired of, 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 of telling everybody that everything's just fine and dandy and my heart actually hurts and I wish I could cry on somebody's shoulder. You know, you see what I'm saying? It's time for the church to simply get real. Amen. It's time for the church to simply get real and say, you know what? I'm going to do what it needs, what I need to do. I'm going to ask God to stir my heart 
to where I have a burden for the lost. I want to ask God to stir my heart to lay somebody on my heart that I can pray for them in a consistent manner so that I can see them burst into the kingdom of God. And then not only that, I'm going to be that daddy or I'm going to be that mother and I'm going to do something to help raise them spiritually so that in 15 years, 10 years, 5 years, they're still sitting in the pews. They've brought their family in and next thing you know, you got to build on because people have been good mommies and daddies spiritually and the family has grown. Yeah. Is it that difficult? No. Even a steel picker can get it. <laughs> Accountability, the last point. Accountability is this, liable to be called to account. Don't make a vow to God that you don't intend to keep. Amen. It's scary to make a vow to God and not keep it. But her accountability, you know what's beautiful? Hannah so humble that's a beautiful intro it's alright you're good I'm just teasing with you I'm, I'm too spontaneous beautiful intro what was I thinking <laughs> but accountability she, she, she remembered her vow she knew that she would be called into account she knew that there was a responsibility there Verse 27 says this, For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. And when Samuel got to the temple, he didn't ask where he was at, did he? No. His mama taught him. And I'm sure daddy somewhere along the line had a hand in that as well. Because he, he took the family yearly. So he knew where the temple was. He knew what was going to be expected of him. His mom didn't give him the shock treatment. I think sometimes we've given newborn babes in Christ the shock treatment. That means you got saved? Great. You're on your own. Good luck. The fear will last for a little while. You'll come down to earth pretty soon. Yeah. And you know what? A newborn babe always needs us. Yeah. We need to tend to the newborn babe. We need to check the newborn babe. We need to go in and look in the crib and and squeeze his cheeks every now and again. And rock him gently. Wipe his nose, burping. Sometimes that gets messy too, but hey, that's part of it. But she remembered her vow. And Hannah had prepared him for this. She was a woman of integrity. She could be held accountable for something and come through with purpose, vision, and wholehearted consecration. Her name signifies this. It means settled or fixed. You've got a lot to live up to. 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad. As believers are we doing what God wants us to do in order to see new babes birthed into the kingdom of God. Amen. You know something? I'm going to say this and then I'm done. Don't lament what hasn't been. Do you understand me? Don't lament what hasn't been. Start now. The worst thing you can do is lament what hasn't been because the devil will jump on that and accuse us even more. So don't lament what was not taking place, but resolve in your heart and your mind and your spirit before man and God that you're going to do something different. And start now. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. And remember this. I'm right here in the pew with you. Yeah. I preached this to me first. I told you you could just listen.
But revival comes at a cost. Amen. Amen. It's not easy. It's not convenient. It really isn't. There's a lot of things in life that are not convenient, but we've got to change that. And with God's grace, with God's help, if we ask Him to do that, He will help us. He'll give us a renewed zeal toward the things of God. But we have to ask. And you know what? Here's another thing. I said I was going to close. Boy, I'm out. But one, just one more thing. But here's the thing. You know, don't, don't give up. If, if you pray and ask God to, to help you and you're like, boy, I, I don't seem to be changing. Continue to pray. Amen. Hannah didn't give up. That's right. Amen. That's right. She stayed and stayed. Yeah, she In fact, if you read that whole account through, Eli thought she was drunk. She was so beside herself, so hurt, so frustrated that Eli thought she was either crazy or drunk, one or the other. But she's like, no, 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 you don't understand. My heart is hurting so bad. But don't ever give up. Keep praying and ask God to give us a burden. Keep asking God to help us. Don't ever give up on that. Yeah. If it doesn't come right away, you keep pounding. You keep pounding. It's just like, and I may have preached on this uh, this week, but sometimes in your Christian walk, brother, and I've, you've alluded to it, and I've alluded to it some, sometimes we have to remind God that right here in the Word, I don't maybe necessarily feel you, but I tell you what, I haven't tapped out. I might be bitten half being almost choked and I might be ready to pass out but I'm telling you by God's grace I haven't tapped out I still believe the word of God I still know that I'm his child I still know that he lives and rules and reigns in my heart I still know that I have an experience with Jesus Christ as my personal savior I still know that he's alive and well on the throne and regardless of what's going on around me in my personal life I still know that he has his hand on the controls of my life he's in charge so take heart with that and keep pounding away. Don't give up. Keep pounding away. Amen. Brother Jamie. Amen. <coughs> wow. Amen. These fellas come and give us a song tonight. That's a ground-shaking message. Amen. Heart-shaking, heart-stirring tonight. And... He said he was preaching it himself, but I'll be honest with you, that hit us all right in the <laughs> Amen. Hopefully it hit us all right in the heart. Brother Paul made this statement. He said, start now. What do you mean, preacher? I'm saying the altar is open. You want to come your heart out to God like Hannah did? Amen. To, now is the accepted time. Don't harden your heart. Don't wait for tomorrow. Because you got Monday after Monday after Monday after Monday. We've all been there. I'm going to start riding my bike. I'm going to start walking. I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to start doing that. And we never start. We don't start today. We ain't never going to start. Amen. Let's stand right now as they sing.